I am Danny and welcome to my channel. Today's video is how I maintain my in-ground chlorine vinyl lined swimming pool. So let's get started. In a perfect world, all you would have to do is clean your pool and adjust your water chemistry just one time. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. Organic materials like insects, leaves, even people urinating in your pool. Who, me? Yes, you. And thunderstorms can pollute your swimming pool with contaminants that can play havoc with your pool's chemistry. These images were from Hurricane Michael, October 11th, 2018. We have had some heavy rains lately, so I know my pool is going to need some attention. Not tending to your pool regularly can cause algae growth and the accumulation of leaves, which can clog your filters and cause improper water circulation. You can never turn your back on regular pool maintenance. I can do a visual inspection of my pool and find out a lot of important details. The first detail I'll notice is these outlet jets. So during the day when I walk up to the pool and I see these outlet jets operating in each corner, then that tells me automatically that my filter pump is working. This is my filter pump. It has a timer that I have set to come on during the day. And at night, I got it where it'll switch off. Another important detail that I observe is, is the accumulation of leaves in the pool. And in the deep end, there's some large clusters of leaves, so I'll have to scoop those out. This is my pool cleaner. It's a Polaris brand. It's what sucks a lot of the smaller leaves and debris off the bottom of the pool. And lastly, another detail that I'm gonna look at is water level. And by the looks of the skimmer window, the water level is high. I like to set my water height about half of that window. Because what you want is the top surface of that water to flow into the skimmer and start filtering out all the uh, impurities that accumulate on top of the water. So before I do anything else, I need to lower my water level. Now, if my water level was too low, I would simply just add some water to my pool. My pool has an automatic leveler. It's a float control system, but it doesn't work. So I have to use a water hose. So before we lower that water level, let me show you some of the major components of a swimming pool. So obviously the large body of water that's your water source. This water will then flow into the skimmer. The skimmer has a little collective basket that's behind that little panel on top. And then the water is pulled through by the filter pump. The filter pump has a little filter basket and then the water flows through this pipe through the selector and it's forced through sand in this sand filter. Then water flows back through a tube and goes back to the pool. To the outlet jets. There's an outlet jet here and there's an outlet jet at the opposite corner. This provides circulation of the water to where it could go back over to where the skimmer window is and the process repeats itself. So that gives you a basic idea on how a swimming pool's water filtration system works. Which is a perfect time to tell you about this little door right here. Before we dump this water out, I want to clean that screen out right there. 
So all you do, you take the cover off and you carefully reach in here. Sometimes you'll find some critters in here, so you gotta watch it. Sometimes you might, you may wanna invest in a little hook or something, just try to hook it. But this is what collects the leaves, at least a large part of the leaves. So I'm gonna make sure there's no other debris floating around. Now, if this basket's hard to tug out, just go and sim just simply turn off your pump. It releases the vacuum that's on the bottom, and then you should be able to easily pull the, the filter out. And then you just dump it out. And then just push it back in its slot, put your cover back on. And that takes care of that. Now servicing the skimmer basket should be a daily routine. So when you come home from work or in the afternoons, just just dump it out. It should be like a regular day routine. This sand filter has to be periodically cleaned. To clean it, you use a method called backwash and rinse as part of the selection. I periodically do that about every couple of weeks, but I've used it But today, with the water level high in the pool, I'm going to use that method, backwash and rinse, to lower the water level. So first, I'm going to add my drain. Now, I'm going to turn off my filter pump. Also, a word of caution, with any kind of breaker box, ensure that you're not standing in any puddles of water when messing with any type of electricity. And also make sure your hands are dry. So I'm gonna open up the panel and turn off the filter pump. Next, I'm gonna select backwash. I'm gonna press down on this and rotate it counterclockwise to backwash. Now I'm going to turn the filter pump back on. And then water will start draining out of the pool. While I wait for that water level to drop, I'm going to dip out some of those leaves. So this is the swimming pool vacuum cleaner. I'm fixing to hook it up. We'll just spread it out and a little bit later I'll Start it Well, my water levels, it's exactly where I want it to be at. So I'm fixing to cut off that backwash. Now I'm going to move the selector to rinse. Activate the pump again. I usually run the rinse for about 30 seconds to a minute. So there is a sight glass on the side of the manifold selector. This gives you a, a general condition of the water that's being dumped out. And in this situation here, it looks like the water's clear. So I'm fixing to cut off the power to the pump. And I'm going to move the selector back to filter. But I'm not going to start it up right this moment. I'm going to go ahead and service my pump basket. 
So before we search that basket, let me tell you a little bit about this gauge. With the system off, always ensure that the needle goes to zero. And when you power up the pump, make sure you get to the pressure, your normal pressure. My pressure is about 10 PSI with, it, with, the, with the system working perfectly. So once we uh, service the basket and I activate the uh, pump again, we'll see if it comes up to about 10 PSI. So first I'm gonna remove the cover. It has this gasket, so I'm gonna press it back into position. So don't forget to do it later. And then I'm going to remove the basket. Just got to watch out for that gasket. Got to make sure it's on there good. And then I'm going to wash it out. I'm going to slide the basket in. It's got front here for the front. Make sure it's turned the right way. Next, I'm going to add some water so I can time this pump. I'm going to make sure this gasket is down good. I'm going to slide this in the slots, tighten up my screws. And try to immediately, as, well, as quick as you can, turn your pump on so that water won't get the air back in it. Now I'm going to turn the filter pump back on. And then water will start draining out of the pool. My pressure is at 10 PSI. So this is my working pressure. And... We got good flow again out of the outlet jets. So with the system back running, now would be a good time to put that Polaris to use. The Polaris is operated by this booster pump. It has an outlet that goes back to the pool and forces water into it, and that's what causes this vacuum. Cleaner on. pump's running, so let's go check on the Polaris. Now that's a happy Polaris. While the Polaris is making its rounds, I will use the brush to clean the hard to get to areas like the stairs, the walls above the water line, and the ladder. In order for my pool to operate efficiently and to keep my family safe while they are swimming, I will need to ensure that the pool's chemistry is within its recommended ranges. Before handling any pool chemicals, it is recommended to always wear safety glasses, protective gloves, and to protect your clothes from bleach. Always fill your bucket halfway with water first, then pour in your pool chemical, and then mix. Always read the manufacturer's label for their recommendations and warnings for their product. And never mix two chemicals together, which could result in producing dangerous fumes or possibly an explosion. Chlorine, pH, and alkalinity are the most frequent adjustments I make to my swimming pool. Chlorine is a disinfectant that kills bacteria and prevents the growth of algae and other microorganisms. The recommended range for free chlorine which is the available chlorine in the swimming pool, is from one to three parts per million. I use chlorine tablets and liquid chlorine to maintain this range. Chlorine is either stabilized or unstabilized. Stabilized means that the cyanuric acid is added to it, like these tablets. Cyanuric acid helps lengthen the life of chlorine from being burned up by the sun's rays. 
I use the stabilized chlorine tablets in a chlorinator to not only maintain my normal free chlorine level, but to help maintain my recommended stabilizer range of 40 to 100 parts per million. I strive to keep it about in the middle of that range, about 75 parts per million. If my tablets are too weak and can't reach the 75 parts per million, I will use granular cyanuric acid to bring up the stabilizer level. Of course, I always follow the manufacturer's recommendations because I do not want to have high amounts of cyanuric acid in my pool. This can cause the chlorine to become oversaturated and as a result, the pool would have to be drained and refilled. Once my cyanuric acid levels are where I want them, I will quit using the chlorine tablet filled chlorinator and start using the unstabilized liquid chlorine. I pour the chlorine around the deep end. The main goal is to maintain the one to three parts per million for the free chlorine and to not exceed the normal range for the stabilizer. So whatever method you decide is solely up to you. pH is the acidity of water. Its recommended range is from 7.2 to 7.8. When the pH is below 7.2, the water is more acidic. This can cause corrosion and staining of pool equipment, eye irritation, and cause chlorine to dissipate more quickly. To bring the level back up to the normal range, I add sodium bicarbonate, which is also known as baking soda. When the pH is above 7.8, the water is more basic. This can cause scaling on pool equipment, cloudy water, weakened sanitizing power of chlorine, and eye irritation. To bring this level down to normal range, I add sodium bisulfate, which is a dry acid. Alkalinity is the buffering capacity of water, or, in other words, water's ability to resist changes in pH. Its recommended range is from 80 to 120 parts per million. Usually, if the pH is correct, then the alkalinity is also close to being correct. If the alkalinity is below 80 parts per million, add sodium bicarbonate. If the alkalinity is above 120 parts per million, add sodium bisulfate. So then, alkalinity uses the same chemicals to adjust as the pH. I use test strips at least two times weekly to obtain my current levels for chlorine, pH, alkalinity, and the stabilizer. The strips are inexpensive and easy to use. I gather my test sample by the diving board away from the outlet jets and the skimmer. I dip the test strip into the deep end at about elbow's length. Then I will compare the test strip with the colors on the side of the container. If I ever have a test result that makes no sense to me, then I will take a water sample to my nearby pool store and let them give me some advice. I am still learning about my pool. So all my tests checked out perfect, right down the middle, even my cyanuric acid. It's around 100, a little high, but it's still within the, uh, the range, the good range. But right now would be the time that I make any type of chemical adjustments to the pool. The last thing I have left to do on my regular pool maintenance is to shock my pool water. I try to shock my pool water at least once every two weeks or unless adverse conditions arise. These conditions could be caused by a loud odor of chlorine and this is caused by ammonia joining with a, a chlorine and creating something called chloramines or it could be you could have had a large amount of swimmers in your pool and they excreted their bodily fluids, their sweat, and yes, urine. And it could be caused by bad thunderstorms. Bad thunderstorms usually has a lot of acidic rain and this could dilute your pool water. Shocking the pool, also known as superchlorination, is a supercharged chlorine treatment that will kill bacteria, help prevent algae growth, and break up chloramines. Pool shock gets its best results while being applied at night. Its power is short-lived and doesn't need to try to compete with the sun's hot rays while doing its magic.
As with any pool chemicals added, I will refrain from running my pool cleaner and will continue running my filter pump until my chemical levels are back to normal. I will fill my bucket about half full of water, then I'll make sure that I have my protective equipment on as I add the chlorine shock to the water, and then I'll stir thoroughly, dissolving the shock. I try to evenly distribute the pool shock around the deep end of the pool. I know that high chlorine levels can definitely affect my pH, so I will recheck those chemicals again the next day. Here I am rechecking those chemical levels. Once those levels are normal, I can have some fun! So you can never turn your back on regular pool maintenance. Thank you so much for watching my video on how I maintain my swimming pool. I hope it inspires you not only to do your own pool maintenance, but also do other projects as well.